السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين. My name is Rania Awad. I'm the director of the Rahma Foundation that puts on these uh, programs for the girls. Our mission statement at the Rahma Foundation is to educate Muslim women and girls in Nardeen. Alhamdulillah, the organization was incorporated. My guess is, if I remember correctly, back in 2007, or perhaps it was 2008, um, so some time ago now, and soon thereafter, we started programs for the girls here in this semester. We had started programs initially for women, and then added programs for girls. And here at the MCC, we've been here, mashallah, for about 12 years, as our guests, collectively, between summer camps and between, sometimes they were Saturday halakas, sometimes they were Friday halakas. Over the years, things changed. Now, at this point in time, they are Friday night uh, halakas for the girls, the Young Muslimas Halakha program. And they range from ages four all the way through high school. And at the same time, we'll, we'll tell you the breakdown of how that all works with the girls. And at the same time, parallel to that, we have a mom's or woman's halakha that happens in this room, actually, on Friday night, parallel to that program. So it's uh, lots of things happening for the girls and for the women. I know a question's going to come about the boys. I'm not responsible for the boys. <laughs> you can... Take those questions and ask MCC. <laughs> our mission statement as a nonprofit is dedicated to women and girls. We care deeply about our boys and deeply about our men, inshallah, but that's not the focus of this particular organization. Mashallah, because I know everyone's going to haunt me later, and I'm not responsible for them. <laughs> with that being said, inshallah, um, I wanted to share with you a little bit of kind of exciting news. I know we've been off. Um, We've never had a gap this long. We had a year off, subhanAllah, last year. We thought we were coming back into the building in person. And in COVID, during the pandemic, we had gone online for a little while. And we kept thinking we were going to come in person. And then it got pushed, and then it got pushed. And subhanAllah, last year was the only year out of those 12 years that we didn't have a program. So we're really excited to be back. I've heard from a lot of girls and parents and such that they're really excited to be back too. So we're all happy, alhamdulillah. We hope it's a fruitful year. The other exciting piece of news, alhamdulillah, is that I don't know how we got the honor and blessing of doing this, but this whole program and all of the different halakas by age group, I'll tell you about their names and their themes in just a moment, was something created by one of my teachers. Her name is Ansa Sosan Imadi. Some of you have had the pleasure of getting to learn from her and meet her so far. She's originally from Damascus, Syria, um, although by way of America. Um, and. Uh, and it's somebody I studied with when I went to Damascus and really, really enjoyed how she really thought about childhood and she thought about children and their milestones in different ages, everything from their physical and cognitive milestones, which are well known, but then she adds to it the emotional and the spiritual milestones at a time when people were not talking about any of those things, subhanAllah. And I really enjoyed her programs that she would do for girls that I saw in Damascus and wanted to emulate them here. So we tried and did our very best and I'll tell you the breakdown of those groups. The names, even the names, are things that she herself had come up with and have a specific reason as to why each group is named the way it's named. The Frogs and Buddies, the Rainbows, the Rosebuds, and the Busy Bees. And we have our high school group, which is called Birds of Paradise. So that whole um, story, for all those years, we were doing this with her supervision remotely. But now, subhanAllah, the way COVID happened and the pandemic and things, and so Sosan Imadi is actually in the Bay Area, <laughs> subhanAllah, not forever, although we hope it would be forever, but at least for a portion of time. So this time we're really excited because our teachers have direct supervision by the person who actually created the programs, which is like, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what we did right to get such a blessing. <laughs> she could have ended up anywhere in the world and she ended up here in the Bay Area, subhanAllah. And she doesn't have roots to California, so it's just a really ajib thing, really beautiful thing. Um, and I share that with you because I'm really excited because we have a new cohort of teachers who all day today after you after the parent orientation when you leave They're going to be here and training with us all day in their teacher orientation and training sessions getting ready to work with your girls Inshallah, so that's kind of exciting news and she herself will be doing the training Now that all is background now I'm going to talk a little bit about the groups and I think we have some slides to share with you and we'll go through each of the groups I know everyone here has different girls of different age groups, so kind of bear with me, inshallah. And we'll also go through what the, what the goal of the programs is, inshallah. There's really two main goals before I start going into each of the groups. There's two main overarching goals in the Rahma Foundation's Friday Night Halakas. Number one, instilling the love of the Prophet Muhammad and the love of Allah in the hearts of our daughters. 
and number two, that they build bonds of sisterhood. If they come away with these two things, alhamdulillah, program successful. If they learn more things along the way, alhamdulillah. But those are the two main goals. And for those parents, okay, I just got a show of hands with people, are returning parents, returning families? Okay, mashallah. For those, and welcome to all our new families, we're really happy to have you. And for those who are returning, I wonder if you can at all speak to the excitement the girls have on Friday nights. There's a lot of bustle here. <laughs> mashallah, I don't know if anybody wants to comment on that to let our other parents know kind of what their reactions are on Friday nights from the girls. Have we ever been able to accomplish our goals, would you guys say? Yeah. Uh, my daughter loves Friday nights just because she's excited to see her friends and these friends I think hopefully are inshallah for life. I, I can only see the bonds forming and whenever she's at the mushroom she'll gravitate towards them and find them. So it's really nice to see that and she's learned a few things along the way as well. I love her <laughs> we definitely have our shortcomings. We're definitely learning and continuing to grow. We do hope though, inshallah, that these two things that we promise you that they happen, inshallah. And then we hope more things on top of that. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the, the different groups. Um, we'll start with our youngest. These are our four and five year olds. So pre-K and kindergarten. And they're named Frogs and Bunnies. <laughs> and the Frogs and Bunnies, um, there is a very specific story that goes with this that kind of continues in the whole year. The, the story of Frog and the story of Bunny. And we actually have puppets that kind of go with them. And these stories talk about um, very gently and very beautifully in a very good manner, you know, just a gentle manner, teaching about the good mannerisms that a Muslim should have. So frog kind of helps correct bunny, bunny helps correct frog, you know, there's a whole story between them. And in terms of the actual um, program itself, the purpose here is aqidah, kind of for children to, at the youngest, youngest ages, instilling inside of them this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a connection that there is a creator, something greater and bigger than them. And they do that through learning about all the different signs. So they talk about the signs and actual signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they also talk about... Um, you know, there's, there is some memorization of Qur'an, there is some discussion of Islamic terms, but very much age-appropriate, kind of at that level. A lot of it is focused on love. We don't come at things from a place of like halal and haram, that's not the focus of these groups. This group is very much a love-building type of group, actually all of them are. They'll have circle time, the shades, story time, crafts, um, and their puppet show, inshallah. This particular year, all of our um, again, overarching focus across all the groups, and we'll do this kind of more age-appropriate, is a focus on salah, a focus on prayer, and the loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting it to a sense of actually connecting to the prayer. So at the little, little bitty kid level, they'll kind of have some aspects of this, but as the ages get older, you'll see there's more and more of that tied in. The next group is the rainbows, and this is a name, obviously, that was given about 20 years ago. So <laughs> with that, I actually, um, before I go further on this particular group, I'll say that this age group is the next age group up. These are our elementary school kids. They are your um, first, second, and third graders. And mashallah, we have a lot of kids in this age group who've signed up. So they're actually going to probably be more like in the first grade class, second grade class, third grade class is probably what it's going to look like instead of kind of one big <laughs> group. Um, but the themes of what they're doing is essentially very similar. The way the name came to be, and I'll have a discussion with all of you in just a moment about whether the name stays or changes. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. But the way the name came to be is because all of the different colors of the rainbow, they're different, but they all work together in unison to create something very beautiful. And the whole theme here with working with the girls, the reason that name was chosen is because all of them are very different. They come from different backgrounds, different thoughts, different ideas, different personalities, yet they're all meant to kind of work together to create something beautiful, which is the rainbow. And that's the emphasis of their group. Their group is really focused on, in addition to everything we're talking about here, it's really looking about how it is that we're, that how we're meant to do teamwork and work together effectively and kind of bridge some of our differences, but also make that a lasting friendship, a beautiful thing like the rainbow. I'll pause for a minute, because here, as this Osin has asked me to ask you all as parents, especially those who are parents of rainbows to be, um, but also other parents in the room as well, Given our current status of 2022 and the way the name has been certainly misappropriated, I'm curious if there are folks who prefer to change this name. That's actually an open community discussion at this moment, and I'm curious if folks have any thoughts on this. 
Yes. Yes. It's an article. Um, so I told my daughter about uh, she's going to be in the Rainbow Group. She was really excited about it, and that the whole thing about what's going on right now with the theme Rainbow didn't even come to my mind when I read Rainbows mm -hmm. as the group that she's in. So I have no concern. Plus one. Okay. And she's have a Rainbow Group answer, and I feel the same as she does. Okay. Rainbow is beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very beautiful. It's very upsetting that, 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 that this has been misappropriated in this way. Um, our concern isn't so much shying away or hiding from or trying to cower away from naming it this way. That's not at all why the question is coming. The question is whether we don't want any parents kind of with ruffled feathers or bothered by it. But as long as you all are not, and you see it for what it actually is, <laughs> this beautiful thing, then we can continue and shovel with that name. Sound good? Yes, we're taking a community poll here. <laughs> All right. So back to what we were talking about in terms of what they do. Um, good at uh, neat, neat, being neat and clean and helpful and working as a team, bringing joy to others and being useful to others are all themes that are happening. Here too, like I said, there's an overarching um, focus on loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that manifesting in prayer. That's going to be in all of the groups. Um, another thing that you're going to find in all the groups where with each age that increases, it gets more and you know, more and more, I should probably go this way, deeper and deeper, deeper um, in the lessons. Um, and that is the story of Saint Dan Luqman, Luqman al Hakim, Luqman the Wise, and all of the lessons that come from that. So if your daughters haven't f fully kind of worked on the lessons from within Surah Luqman, you'll see that in all of our groups, both the prayer discussion and the Surah Luqman discussion is going to, for this semester, is going to kind of be overarching that entire. Mm -hmm section. So far so good? I'll introduce each of the groups and then we can have a discussion back and forth with questions, inshallah. Is this another? Oh, this is just the daily. Oh, the daily activity. The daily activity in which they're doing tasbih, the and nasheed, and also um, every every time, so, so, so that you know how the day works, they come in, they welcome each other, they kind of have a little intro. Usually there's a beginning with some Qur'an and Dikr right at the very beginning of the group. Then they have usually a mini lesson together. This is a, this is the case for mo almost all of the groups. They'll have like a mini lesson with their teachers. And then there's usually after that, usually by then it's prayer time. Different times of the year, usually prayer time will come in. They return to their class and then they have a fun activity. The rest of the time is crafts, activities, lots of enjoyment back and forth in which they're, you know, um, having a good time together, <laughs> inshallah. So it's a, it's a balance between learning but also a fun, inshallah. That brings us to our third group, and that is the Busy Bees. Our Busy Bees are our fourth and fifth graders. And these these kids, mashallah, <laughs> I love this name, I love the Busy Bees name, because if you look at the hexagon, the, the different sides of it, you'll see that there's something written on each of them. But on an adept, skillfulness, working together, being an importance to the world, and so on. And very similar to what we said in Rainbows, here too you have six sides of six kind of pillars or main um, goals that this particular group has, and they're busy bees. At this point in time, they're just busy bodies. <laughs> they have a lot to say, they're having a lot of their own opinions that are starting to form, um, and they have a place, a safe place to really discuss those thoughts and ideas with their teachers and peers, all while kind of working on the things that we talked about, put on adept and skillfulness, hardworking, clean and neat, um, and being a healing to the world. This concept of honey, what they produce as a shifa, as a healing, is a theme that happens in this particular age group. Like now you're old enough to be very purposeful in the world and what you um, create is actually a healing to everybody else. That's kind of our goal with this particular group, inshallah, our fourth and fifth graders. And now we start introducing a couple higher level things like journaling, for example, writing. They all um, have, in addition to their halakha and their craft that they do, like in every group, here there's a little more reliance on them to kind of really bring forward their thoughts and ideas. They're much more, they're old, they're getting older now to where they can start to really engage in conversation. Then we head into our middle school years, our rosebuds. These are our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And again, much we have a lot of um, people enrolled in these in this group, so we have them actually split by sixth grade group, seventh grade group, and eighth grade group. Also noticing that our eighth graders tend to be emotionally in a different place than our sixth graders, for example. So they're in different groups. And um, here, as the name might show, the idea of a rosebud is one who's kind of coming into that age of um, uh, maturity 
not fully blossomed yet into a rose. She's kind of like in that moment of blossoming and we're kind of like working with them to blossom into that beautiful rose, inshallah ta'ala. And the focus here, in addition to the Quran and the Kira, their halakha and their craft, there's some extra pieces to this discussion. In middle school, there's a lot more happening in terms of um, self-image, a lot of questions about the world around them, their place in the world. There's a lot more emphasis on discussion, particularly kind of that safe space again, a lot of mental health comes up in these conversations, a lot about spirituality and connecting to peers, friends, bullying, all kinds of things kind of emerge in these conversations. And our teachers are trained and will be training them to hold on to some of these um, very deep questions that sometimes come up and it really is a space for them to be able to talk about this with their peers, but also with supervision of the teachers. Here too, the focus will be on, just like the others on this in this semester, focus on the prayer and connecting to Allah by this age most of the girls would have reached the level to where they have to start praying, so we want to make sure that they've gotten all of the steps down. And even if your daughter is somebody who already prays by this age, there's always some nuances, right? So we're actually doing an inventory towards the beginning of the groups to understand and assess their knowledge and see where they're at. We're not going to bore them. We're just going to have groups that are a little more advanced and groups that are not as advanced and kind of work in actually having each group do more than what they came in with. So by the end of it, they're very comfortable with all the aspects. We don't want anybody leaving our, the goal here is we don't want anybody leaving our Friday year-long program and still wondering about some very basic aspects of their religion, if that makes sense. So that's part of our goal here. It's not a Sunday school. This is not a substitute for Sunday school. This is also not a substitute for your own um, teaching of your children, whatever classes, classes, teachers, etc., put on teachers, you know, Islamic school, te Islamic studies teachers that you might have. Not a substitute. This is a girls' um, youth group, but it's not all fun. It has parts of it that relate to really growing in their Islamic knowledge and loving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of spiritually. Make sense so far? Excellent. That leads us to the last group, which is our high schoolers, our ninth to twelfth grade. And we will probably here split the ninth graders away from our uh, older high schoolers into two groups, I believe. Maybe three, because we have so many 10th graders. MashaAllah, maybe even three groups. Okay, how did it not? And here, um, a lot of what I mentioned about the rosebuds is actually true of the birds of paradise, which, by the way, is a name that they one day came up on their own with. MashaAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah was the one that Anse created. Um, but it's, it's really cute that they themselves kind of came up with this name, and we kept it this many years. Um, the focus, of course, is everything else, but here, everything I said about the rosebuds kind of take it another notch up with the high schoolers. And I'm really excited about um, introducing you to the different teachers that are in these different groups. In our high school group in particular, we have a lot of returning teachers, some of whom are actually graduates of this very program. So that's kind of a beautiful thing, oops, that you have, um, you know, some of our very main teachers have themselves, like, 12 years ago, they were my Rosebud kids, right? <laughs> my Halakha 12 years ago. That turned or finished graduating, went to college, graduated, some of whom got married, some of whom are in the process, mashallah, but they've come around and they've actually now are the teachers of the Halakha. So not only have they been there, done that, but they really know what it means to live and walk this life, that use this path, inshallah. So I'm hoping, inshallah, your girls get the benefit of that. And uh, one day your girls are the next group of teachers <laughs> in the future, inshallah. So I've shared a little bit about all of the groups. Uh, one more thing that I want to share before I turn it up, let's turn it to uh, questions for you, inshallah. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit more specifically. If we go back to the Frogs and Bunnies, the youngest age group, some of the main themes from Surah Thukman that will be focused there are gratitude, being good to our parents, and following those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just, just like if you're wondering, okay, what from Surah Thuqman, how do you split that into different um, age-appropriate levels? That's what the littlest kids are doing. For those who are in our um, rainbows group, turning to Allah is kind of their focus. Our busy bees, the middle group, are going to be focusing a lot on the prayer. By the time we get to our rosebuds, their main themes they're focusing on are humility and how to speak and interact with others. So that kind of that interpersonal relationships with other people. And when we get to the high school age, their focus from Surah Al-Bukman is going to be focused on encouraging what is right, discouraging what is not, and patience. <laughs> I think all the things that uh, all groups need, but inshallah definitely age appropriate for each level. 
All right. So before we go to some of the logistics of calendars, dates, registration, pick up, drop off, all the rest that we have to talk about, I want to just pause for a minute and take your questions. What questions do we have about the different age groups and the content within them? Yes. I think of my daughter, she's in the rainbows, but she is a little delayed. Is there a possibility that she could start in the fall of the money? Or... So that's a logistical question, and I think I'll let Sister Amina answer that soon, inshallah. But it's a great question. We can talk after, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so just a question about, you mentioned for all in all the subgroups. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not a substitute, but just wondering right. are you choosing like just some special suras or something for this group so yeah. we, we can work with them? Yeah, that, exactly. Depending on their ages, which age and which group, they usually choose a suda or if they're small suttas, a series of small suttas that they recite at the very beginning. And they become their halakha's suda, basically, that they recite consistently. And that's why I say it's not a substitute for our because they're not doing reading of the Qur'an and learning the letters and how to put words together. That's not the focus of this group. They're just starting, like you start your day, you start any good thing with Qur'an, they're starting off with Qur'an every day. That's what the Qur'an portion is. So um, I do hear the um, in English about Qiyam nights, because you used to do that for the busy season. It's very popular. That was the highlight for my daughter, you know, in the past years. Sorry. How could we forget about that? Mashallah. For anybody who, who's new to us, um, you were mentioning, Mashallah, a beautiful thing that we used to do with the girls. I don't know what the COVID restri I don't know what the restrictions are. Do you know? I think we need to talk about it. Yeah, we probably have to ask the board about this. Yeah. Because yeah. that was the first thing my daughter asked. Okay. Me. What? Okay. Are we going to do the cam nights again? Yeah. Mashallah. The older kids, honestly, even some of the younger ones. Busy, 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 set up. Busy, busy, set up, Mashallah. Yeah. They had something called Qiyam nights, and so they would have a sleepover essentially at the masjid in this in this room with all their teachers. And you don't have to you don't have to opt in, but those who chose to opt in, they had their teachers here, and they would have a prayer program, a Qiyam program, and they would have fun and activity, and they would bring their sleeping bags and pillows and stuffed animals and who knows. <laughs> and sometimes they were praying, and sometimes they were doing cartwheels. And, you know, <laughs> a great time in this in this room here. Um, but we always had security in, on those particular nights, and Khan Amin and Jasalaf was always here all through the night. They do sleep, but then, then they're here for fajr and breakfast, and then parents pick them up early the next morning. So we'll just have to see if the rules allow for such a thing now that we're back to the masjid. Inshallah. Inshallah. Other questions on content? Can I help explain anything about any of the groups? Okay, then inshallah I can turn it over to Khan Amina, who will speak to you a little bit more about logistics. Okay, so I come. Um, so I'm the one that sent you all the emails. Um, and um, we will start next Friday, October 24th. We will take a break for Thanksgiving, and then we'll end on December 19th. We will take a break, a winter break of two weeks. Um, and I don't, we'll either start January 6th or I think maybe the week after, it just depends. Um, some of our Halakha leaders are college students and they are take that, that time off because they're off from school. Um, so, but we will start definitely back in January for another session that goes up until the start of Ramadan. Um, and I know a couple people asked about registration, so we will redo registration again in December. And yes, those of you that are currently registered will get priority registration um, because when we did our registration a couple weeks ago, I think within 30, 45 minutes we were sold out, mashallah. Um, so the current parents will get priority registration um, and then after that, any new parents that want to join um, can join, inshallah. Okay, so just some basic policies. Um, we only have one hour with the girls. I'm sorry, two hours. We only have two hours with the girls from 7 to 9. Um, so our time is very precious. Please drop your girls off on time. Our teachers are here at least half hour, 45 minutes early preparing. You can drop your girls off at 6.50, um, between 6.50 and 7. But please make sure that they're here, 7 o'clock, in their classroom, ready to start. 
because we only have two hours. The teachers cannot wait for stragglers to come in. Um, and then also, it's a disruption to the other girls. They get excited to see their friends, and everybody's reciting Quran. And then, oh, here comes in their bestie, and it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you all week. How are you? What are you doing? How was school? What happened? And then it's a distraction for the start of the halakha. Um, for the frogs and bunnies and rainbows, we ask that you walk your daughter to the classroom. It's a big building. Um, once the boys come, inshallah, then we could have a whole other side of the building with a whole bunch of boys. Sometimes there's events going on in the prayer area. Um, so we worry about the younger ones and we ask that you please walk them to their classroom. Um, the teacher will sign them in and then when you pick them up at the end of the evening, again, you have to pick them up from the classroom. They will not be allowed to leave the classroom until their parent picks them up, inshallah. Um, please arrive with Udu. Um, we have well over 100 girls signed up um, that are of praying age and if they do all do not come in wudu then it's the bathroom is going to be crowded we're never going to get to the prayer on time um, and they'll never get back to their halakha afterwards to finish um, so please encourage all your girls to make wudu if they have to remake their wudu that's fine alhamdulillah we understand uh, but please make sure that they come in wudu uh, dress code, because we are a Quran-based halakha program and we are in the masjid, uh, we ask the girls to wear modest clothing. This can include a long dress or a baya with pants underneath, uh, loose pants with a long top. Make sure that the top is long enough that it comes down to their thigh or their knee so that when they do go down into prayer, the shirt's not riding up, exposing their back. Uh, hijab for the younger ones is not required. Uh, but we do encourage them. If your daughter's not wearing hijab, that's perfectly fine. Um, but this is a chance for her to practice wearing her hijab in a safe space with other girls that are also wearing their hijab, with halakha leaders who are wearing hijab at the masjid. Uh, so please encourage them to wear the hijab when they're younger, and then when they're older, they do have to wear their hijab, inshallah. Um, sick policy. Please do not send your children to halakha if they're sick. If they were too sick to come to go to school on Friday, they're too sick to come to halakha. That's pretty much the standard rule. If they have a fever, um, if they've recently been vomiting or anything like that, please keep them home. It's better to have them have one child miss halakha one week than to have 10, 15 children miss halakha the next week because someone came um, when they were sick and they were spreading their germs, inshallah. Attendance. We do have a wait list. Um, we let a lot of people in from the wait list because, alhamdulillah, we were able to get more teachers. Um, but we do still have students on the wait list. So please respect the fact that, uh, alhamdulillah, mashallah, the halakha is high demand. And there are girls that really want to get into the halakha. Alhamdulillah, you have a space, you're registered. Uh, please make sure that your daughter attends regularly. If they get sick, obviously, of course, um, you know, family emergency comes up, they can't attend um, once or twice, okay? But beyond that, we really need them coming to the halakha every week, inshallah. Also, that's the only way for them to benefit. You know, it's week by week, as Dr. Rania explained, little bits of information, little bits of knowledge, um, routine consistency that we're trying to instill on the girls. Um, and the only way that they're really going to benefit, the only way they're going to build the bonds of sisterhood, is if they're coming on a regular basis. Uh, pick up time. Please pick your girls up on time at 9 o'clock. Um, the halakha teachers get their own halakha where they get a chance to learn after they finish at 9 o'clock. And they can't get to that halakha where they can benefit with Dr. Rania and Anse Sausen if they're still waiting for the girls to be picked up. So if you're in the halakha with Dr. Rania, I know everybody loves to say afterwards to ask her questions. <laughs> but if you do have a child that's in the halakha, please at least go pick them up and then you can come back inshallah. Um, payment. So if you, had not, if you did not make your initial payment when you registered your daughter, uh, last night all of you should have received a link to make the tuition payment. So check your emails if you haven't seen it yet. Many of you, alhamdulillah, have already made the payment. Jazakallah khair. Um, and if you need to make the payment, just click the link, make the payment, um, and then your registration will be complete, inshallah. 
Um, I got a couple questions about scholarships. We do not want anyone to not be able to attend simply because they cannot afford, their parents can't afford it. So if you need a scholarship, um, please either see me afterwards or you can send an email. That's it. Any questions? Yes. So, Sister Amna, I remember we used to do one registration and that was good for the winter session as well. So, I heard you said we have to do another registration at the... Yes. Oh. Yes. So, that's a change in the rules? Or? Um, it, we just happen. felt that you give... Because we have a lot of new girls, we'll let them try it out for this session and then if they, again, if they want to register for the next session, they'll get priority registration. Um, so, so, it's also accounting. Oh, it's a bit purpose here. It's not a here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I changed that rule. Uh, it's because of our accounting for the accounting purposes. So we are in two different years, one's January bit. And just to keep uh, our accounting head straight, it helps us if we do registration split like that. Um, twice a year is not too bad. We used to do monthly, which drove everybody crazy, especially kind of animal. Um, so I think twice a year. And then we have, um, if, I, I noticed you know, there are some families that have four girls. Um, we can also do payments and spread it out through the year so that helps people. Um, but yeah, just that for us, just, it helps us keep 2022 separate from 2023. Yeah, yeah it, it's, you brought up a good point. If anyone has multiple children and paying for them all at once is a burden, please just reach out and let me know. We can stagger the payments. Um, or even the, the 180, if you want to split it into two payments, we can do that as well. Just let me know. Also, I have a question about the students on the waiting list. And mm -hmm. my two daughters are on waiting list, so that they are going to learn. Give, give me a few days, inshallah. Let's get through the teacher orientation, make sure all of our teachers are committed. I'll look at the numbers, um, discuss it with Anse Sousa to make sure that we're staying within a... We don't want the classrooms to be too large. Um, and then the girls aren't learning things, um, for them. So we, although we want to say yes to everybody, we have to make sure that we're doing what's best for everyone, for the entire group of girls. But we will do our best to, to pull everyone in for with us in China. So this registration is on the phone. Are uh, this registration is only for kids who are coming back, right? Returning students? Or is it for everybody who's even uh, registering brand new? It's for everyone, whether, okay. whether you've attended the Holocaust previously before or if your daughter is brand new to the Holocaust program. Even she has not been uh, she's on a waiting list or something? Is she still, is she currently on the waiting list? I believe so, yeah. Okay, I'll talk to you afterwards, but okay. anyone who is still on the waiting list, like I said, just give me a couple of days, okay. um, and let's say by Monday, inshallah, I will get back to everyone who's on the wait list, um, and let you know what the status is. Okay. Mommy! Yes? Can we attend with, can I attend with Monday? No. No. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It changes the dynamics for all the kids in the class if the parents are there. Yeah. But I promise you the teachers are very well trained to be able to handle the class Just to see Yeah, I'm sure you can imagine what happens if you have 10 or 15 girls in the class plus 10 or 15 girls. It's, it's quite problematic, mashallah. So yeah. apologies. It's a safe space where they get kind of an auntie or someone else that they can go to to ask their questions. Um, and my girls have been in the Holocaust for years, and they always get home and they tell me, you know, this is what the, the this is what the teacher said. This is what happened with the girls. You know, it's an opportunity when they finish the halakha to engage in different conversations with your daughter, um, and it kind of opens up different conversations and topics, the things that she's learning. Um, so I highly recommend to all the parents that after Halakha, you ask your daughters what happened and let them share that with you, and it'll open doors for a variety of different conversations that you can have with her, inshallah. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Do you have plans to do daytime halakha? Um, not yeah. at the moment. The only um, I don't know if I should use this. The only daytime halakhas that we've had have been in the summer, during summer camps. Those usually are in the daytime. But during the school year, and everyone's at school, or <laughs> it's the weekends, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes. Um, for the birds of paradise, especially, um, are the phones allowed during halakha? Do you have to put them away? Do they not come Great question. <laughs> No, <laughs> no phones. We, we want them focused, we want them engaging and interacting with the halakha leader and with each other. So honestly, if you your daughter leaves their cell phones, even if they're not in Words of Paradise, even if they're in one of the younger groups, and they leave their cell phone with you for the two hours, um, they will not miss it, they will not need it, um, and they'll be much more focused if they do not have their phone with them. We also collect them, right? Yeah, the teachers will, yeah, we'll have a little basket and it's, you know, drop your phone in the bucket and you'll get it back when you're done, inshallah. Yeah. And if you need anything, you can get hold of the teacher, inshallah. <laughs> There's always a question about, like, I need to get hold of my daughter. I promise you they're in good hands, inshallah. <laughs> it's really more for their concentration and ability to really be part of what's happening. We also don't want any uh, pictures taken or anything recorded. I mean, it really is a safe space discussion and it really needs to stay that way in, in a private kind of setting. Um, but I, like Khaled Amna said, I really encourage you to have conversations with your daughter afterwards about what all happened and then let us know. The reason we have a teacher's uh, every single Friday, like just like they're teaching, they're also getting. Because we believe in Islam, like you can't give but not take. Like in order to give, you must also receive, like that concept, inshallah. So they are also bringing their questions that have come up from their groups. Anything that the girls have asked, anything they weren't sure how to answer. All the teachers are trying to say, well, let me get back to you next week and then talk to us. Let me talk to our teachers and make sure we have proper answers for whatever it is that's been brought up and so on and so forth. So definitely have that conversation with them. And if there are topics, especially for the older half of the, the group, but even the younger, but certainly the older ones, if you're finding like particular things you're struggling with, with your tweens and teens, let us know. We're happy to try to incorporate that into the actual halakha uh, yeah. Also, if your child ever says, I want to call my mom, we would never stop them from calling you. Just so, just so that you know. Of course. You know, if we, if we take the phones away at, at 7 o'clock at the start of Palata, and for whatever reason your daughter says, I want to call my mom, here's your phone, step outside, call your mom, and then come back. Um, we would never stop them from doing that. So. Yes? Absolutely. The frogs and bunnies we limit to 12, um, and the other groups we try to limit to 15, which is why, you know, as Dr. Rani explained, like for the rosebuds, we have a sixth grade group, a seventh grade group, and an eighth grade group, because otherwise, the girls, the whole idea, it's, it's halakha, but it's very, it's not a lecture. Um, we're not talking at the girls or talking to them. It's very interactive. Um, and beyond 15, the girls all don't have an opportunity to share, and then they feel left out or not part of the group. So we try to keep the group smaller so that the girls all have an opportunity to share and engage as much as they choose. Yes. For the first day of drop-off, we will just, I have two rosebirds and birds of paradise. So we'll just park the car here and then drop them from their hand? No, thank you. That's a very good question. All drop-off and pick-up comes through this door here. Oh. Yeah. So there's a reception desk there. That's where you'll see, you'll see me and probably a couple other volunteers. Um, and then I just, I'm circling around constantly to see if the teachers need anything. Um, in case a child suddenly gets ill or falls down, scrapes their knee, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, you'll find me there at the reception desk, and that's the door that you enter through and exit through. Any other questions? And we'll have volunteers the first day to kind of direct the parents and to direct the girls to their classroom. Um, and then they, they stay in the same classroom every single Friday, so after the first time, they'll know exactly where to go. I know it's a lot, if, this is, if you're new and this is the first time, it might be a lot to take in. So it, they'll, they'll, you'll feel it after a few weeks, there's a flow. Like you'll get into a flow, you'll know kind of the routine, inshallah. 
out. But feel free, as always, to reach out, to ask us questions uh, before the program, during the program, inshallah. And for all of the ladies here, they are more than welcome, inshallah, to the Friday night um, halakas, the parallel ones. When you drop your kids off, inshallah, you're welcome to come in here and uh, participate, inshallah. Um, sometimes, mostly it'll be myself, but sometimes when I'm traveling, it might actually be Ansa Sosa herself, which is kind of neat. Or some of our other wonderful teachers from Rafa Bar, inshallah. So do plan on that. Um, that way you're benefiting at the same time that the girls are benefiting. And sometimes, not always, it's not perfect, but sometimes we try to correlate some of the information so that there is kind of a, you know, kind of a shared learning that is happening across the girls and the women as a part of our mission. Is there a registration for that or just? I believe it's just a drop-in. You're welcome to come as often as you like. Um, if we are doing a particular book or test, one week will add upon the other, but you can come as often or as little as you like. Inshallah. We'd love to have a sense of community amongst the women as well, as we have in the past. All right. Anything else? What each class did today, the main teacher, they are. Yeah. yeah. Each class has at least two teachers. The younger ones have a couple more, a couple of um, assistants. They will escort the girls to the bathroom. Um, you know, make sure they get to the bathroom and get back to their class safely. Um, yes, but there's always a lead teacher and an assistant teacher in every classroom. I'm sitting now. Well, I really appreciate you coming on an early Saturday morning. I know we took you out of bed very early. <laughs> I'm sitting now. Shall have a wonderful rest of your day in this wonderful month of Rabi'an Awal. Inshallah, it's a month of the remembrance of the Prophet وسلم, and a month of you know just commemorating how blessed we are to be part of this ummah. Alhamdulillah. So I pray for all of you, Inshallah, to you know really take up and soak up the, the nude and the light of this month, Inshallah. And we very much look forward to seeing you all next Friday, Inshallah, 7 p.m. or a little bit earlier, 6:50, yes. even better, <laughs> Inshallah. And if you have any questions, Khala and I will stay behind. So the Fadwa is here as well. We'll stay behind a little bit to uh, answer any questions before we welcome our teachers in for their day long teachers training. So thank you, Rafa, inshallah. Barakallahu <laughs> feekum. Take good care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.